Okay, so I realized looking over my other videos that at some point I had lost track of turns and had done turn five twice and uh, and thought maybe now we were just going to turn seven, but we just did turn seven apparently. Um, there's no serious consequences to it at all. It just came, this came sooner, but I don't think there was any way for me to get three resource hexes easily or at all. No, not really. Um, yeah, I might have been a little speedier about it, but there's nothing I can really do about it. So we're going to go to Strategic Turn C. And what that means is we now have to check for Ally Withdrawal. Of course, we will have Ally Withdrawal because we only have one uh, resource hex. And so Ally Withdrawal occurs in like two phases. So the first one is called Minor Withdrawal. And on minor withdrawal, we permanently remove the AIF Odessa unit and both Siberian Czech divisions. Now, the Odessa unit down here is um, not a huge loss. It's not awesome. This effectively goes back to being red control because it's a red city. Uh, there we go. You know, not amazing. I it is nicer to have it than to not, but... Uh, you know, that happens. However, this is where the real loss is, is going to um, make itself felt because if we go zoom in here, <laughs> hey, where is it? Okay, this is the Czech Siberian unit. And it's okay, you can come in. And then there's my other Czech Siberian unit. And both of these are going to now disappear forever. <laughs> Say hello to my dog, Hubble. Hi, Hubble. There's my other dog, Moira. They like to get in the thick of things. Anyway, so losing those units, um, if you don't know historically, those Czech units were essentially soldiers that were uh, fighting the Austro-Hungarians. They had been sort of captured and then they decided they would fight against them, I believe, uh, because they didn't, you know, they wanted to fight for their own independence and not for the Habsburg monarchy. And they were trapped in Russia towards the end of the war, and so they sort of reluctantly fought for the Whites because they weren't really happy with sort of the treatment they had under the Reds. But once the Allies uh, sort of withdrew, they were able to get the Czechs out because the Czechs were sort of like tired of fighting in this war at that point. They were been fighting in war for so long. So that's kind of what that represents. Um, but what it means in this game, unfortunately, is that we have almost nothing left here to defend. Uh, like, Katrinburg just has the People's Unit. we got the West and the Siberian. That's it. Now, we will get one unit back here, but man, pretty weak. Pretty weak. Siberia is not really going to hold out. So, we did my withdrawal. Now, we just do... Let's take a look. Reinforcements. So the whites get their reinforcements, but there are none. The reds don't have any reinforcements either. Um, so now we do replacements, and the whites get two points for the AFSR and two points for the Siberians. So let's see what we have available. Checks can't be used. So I could bring back a bunch of Siberian units, actually. Yeah, we'll bring up a second Siberian. Um, we'll come back disordered. But he'll come back. And I think what we'll do is we'll put him in. Oh boy. I think we'll put him in this town here in Chelyabinsk. Because it desperately needed up there. You can't see it, but um, I'll put him in that town up there. Uh, Chelyabinsk, because I think it's under heavy pressure. So that's something. For the AFSR. I don't think they have anything except for a Cossack unit. They've been relatively spared the sort of plights that the Siberian blundering has led them into. So I think they will bring back the Don Cossacks because we actually do have the Don Cossack uh, space. Unf but maybe I can't put them there. Wait, two, four, five. I can't put them there. I can't violate stacking rules. Oh, that's so. Bleh. That's annoying. Ooh. So I can't put the new Cossacks back. Hmm. Nothing else, huh? Yeah, that was it. That was the only unit I could potentially replace. Well, that's unfortunate. I did not think about that. That's something that 
if you played this game a lot, you would obviously would be like, don't block that spot or save two points of stacking. But I did not do that. So, you know, that's okay. Red replacement steps. Uh, red basically gets all their armies back. Um, they normally get one for having, like, Moscow, Tula, Petrograd, and then they get one for, for every three resources they have, which they currently have seven. So they would be up in line to get five armies. They only have two to replace, so they're going to get both these back. Hi, buddy. All right, so where are we going to put these two armies? That's the big question now. <laughs> Let's get these dice out of the way. The Siberians are teetering. I don't think I'm going to need a whole lot more to take care of them, honestly, since they lost those two... Um, since they lost the uh, checks. So I don't think I'm going to need a whole lot more to take care of them, but maybe one more army? I don't know. Maybe that's overkill? I don't think so. So let's go ahead and bring reduced army and we'll put it here in Ishvesk. All right. And then we'll take our other reduced army because they come in reduced. And let's go ahead and bolster this area. And I think we're definitely going to have to put it here in... Um, well, I want to put it in Kursk. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put it. Nah. Oh, this is such a dangerous stack down here. I need to be kind of careful about what I do here. So yeah, I think we will put it in maybe in, in, uh, Vronezh. Vronezh. Um... Probably mispronounced that. Damn, I just wish it was in Russian, but it's not. Anyway, so we got our units there. We placed those. So that is the strategic turn C. So we did have allied minor withdrawal. But that's sort of the way it goes. Now we're on to the eighth turn, June 1919. So let's go ahead and do our initiative roll. Reds holding on to initiative with a five to four roll. So I think they are going to select, I'm not afraid of the East at all. The East is uh, not worried about that at all. I'm gonna worry about this here. So let's go ahead and do the South. See, this is where I'll start getting kind of complicated because as you can see, we're about to hit the dividing line between South and the South uh, West Front. And then the Frunze effect will be very nice over here, uh, but it will make coordination difficult, right? Because you draw one shit at a time. Uh, whereas the AFSR kind of unites and can activate it through across a bunch of fronts. So that's going to be interesting when that happens, but it hasn't quite happened yet. So we'll go ahead and take the southern front first as our first chit. And the other chits will go in the cup. Alright, so many chits. Ch -ch 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 -chits. Okay, so the south. Okay, hit the button by accident again. I'm about to start really being more aware of that. I've just kind of forgotten. Okay, so there is the south. What are we going to do here? We got some interesting issues. They still get to keep their tank. For a while, I thought maybe the allies would lose their tank here, but they didn't. So they still have this stack here. This is obviously the one that is quite open. It is five points only. I think I could probably get enough around it to do some serious damage, so that's probably what we should be thinking about doing. Hmm, plenty of armies could come in. I like I like what I can do here. So let's go ahead and bring... Start with bringing this guy over. Not worry about the Machno. Oh yeah, the Machno was gonna... Oh, we didn't do strategic movement. God, I'm so... I always want to forget strategic movement, but I'm being a dummy. Probably because no one can really use it. Um, Siberians aren't gonna use it. <laughs> not at all um, and the FSR won't use it and the Soviets have their armies in places they want them to be right now so there's no strategic movement there either so yeah I think we're not gonna use that at all so we're good okay anyway back to the southern front <sighs> let's move this guy down let's get him in the action so maybe like one Two, three, yeah, let's just go to one, two, three. We'll just bring him down the rail line. And let's kind of surround this AFSR unit and see if we can do some real damage here. So the first thing we need to do is go one, 
This guy will go one, two, three. We're gonna have this army unit go one, two. We'll have this guy come out and go, who can even make it? Two, three, no. Uh, he can pass through, guys. Does that negate zone of control? That is a great question. I can really walk through, guys. I'm kind of guessing it does. Let's see. Zone effects and operational movement must stop on any enemy zone. A unit may move. Friendly units do not negate enemy zone of control for operational movement. So yeah, they don't negate it. You can't just like walk over that guy. Uh, maybe I will bring this guy over and we'll yeah, get the total surround. Because I'll go one, two. So yeah, we'll do that. And we'll get the really nice complete surround on that. We have a lot of armies. We can do that easily. But let's hopefully get... Uh, the kind of results we need. Okay, so that's a... Is anybody else going to move? I think this army is going to hold there. I think that's a nice spot for them. Um, Alright, so what do we have here? 4, 8, 12, 16. And we have... So that's 3 to 1 odds there. He is in a city, however. Uh, they are attacking along the river, so that becomes 2 to 1 odds. And we roll the die. Hmm, interesting. Three to five. So the attackers have 12, and then they also get three, six, nine, so they have 21. Uh, the defender gets three, and that's 15. And he, three times five is 15, and gets one, two, three, so that's 18. So that's only a differential of three. And three on two to one, is a little a, little d, retreat. Oh, yeah, interesting, okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, that's not going to be a problem. This won't be a problem. Because uh, you can go through zones when you're retreating. I believe you can do that when you retreat through zone of control. Um, combat, retreat... Yeah, so it's negated by their presence, so we're actually okay. I was like a little worried about that, but we're, oh no, yeah, that'll work out. We're still two away. Okay, so let's go ahead and take, um, this guy will take the loss for the reds. Go ahead and have the Tarek Cossacks. I don't know if they can go that far, though. He can go a different way, but he's going to, I don't know if he can stack with them. Yeah, because I think that's what it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he can't retreat that far. He may die. Um, this guy will go here and then hang out there. Yeah, I don't think he can go anywhere. Because I think this is a six stack. It is. He can't go through there. Unless I make one of them suffer the loss, but he, and then he can take a disorganized result. Oof, that's dangerous. But maybe we got to do it. I don't know the Terex. I don't really care that much about, but I hate losing a unit. Oof, and this becomes just a three stack. Nah, we, we're gonna lose the Terex. Um. We're gonna lose the Terex, I think. I think I'd rather keep these units intact and lose this guy, which is really just too bad. Because now it's gonna be another. What is it? One, two. I guess we have another just two turns, and then we have the strategic thing. So that's that's not bad. Okay. So Terex are out. They retreated. They took their loss. Okay. And we're done there. So that was the southern. So 
launch it. Ooh, the AFSR gets the immediate response. So what do we do here? Hmm. The question, I think, Centers on, do we want to kind of come over here and begin stretching the army out this way and really taking advantage of that two hump uh, division? Do we want to strike out and try to reduce some of these armies that are obviously hurting? I mean, this guy is just clearly in the open. Uh, we could just take him on right there. Um, I don't think these guys can just cross there because it's all... Yeah, it's all C across that way, so you can't even cross that way. Sorry, I'm being all fiddly with my stacks here. And I think this is a, this is a six stack. It's the deadly six stack. Uh, I hate to just not attack with those guys. I don't know. I'm kind of like, hmm. Mach no peasants can't go any further because our partisans, because they're not really um, real partisans. I hate to say the only option may be attacking the third army here. Uh, I could maybe try to come up here and I'd like to do more damage, but I just really can't right now. Maybe I should send some guys over here to take a Katharina slog, which would not be a half bad idea. And hold the Gulai pole. That'd be one, two, three. Yeah, they could do that. But yeah, unfortunately, until we kill that army, we won't be able to like sneak units around the hump, right? Uh, and these guys are just gonna continually come at me. I wish I could attack more than one, but I can't. So I think what we'll do is, well, that's an interesting idea. I could use the raid token. Could use my raid token on the Don Cossacks and have them sort of like zoom through the gap and go one, two, three, four, but it still isn't that amazing. <laughs> it's not quite the right position for them to be used yet. Oh, I wish I could have had the other Cossacks come back. Oh well. Yeah, I think we're just gonna attack with that tank stack and I just can't rely on getting um good numbers here. I don't know. I'm just going to have to be a little bit more conservative here. Um, although I desperately need resource hexes very badly. So yeah, I think we're just going to attack the tank stack. I don't think anybody else is going to even try to move. Should I, should I attack this guy? He is just hanging out in the open. Yeah, why not? Let's do some, let's do some attacks here. Why am I just being so Timmy timid? Let's go here, yeah, let's do that. So he'll come up here, he'll go there, and this guy, if we weren't pushing everybody around. See, I should just use my grubby hands. It's almost better. Okay, I'm just gonna deal with that. We're gonna let my OCD-ness let it go. Okay, we will attack there, and he'll attack there. So let's go ahead and do this guaranteed combat against this disorganized army. So he's hanging out in the clear. Yes, he is. We're attacking, I believe we have just one-to-one -one odds, because we just have six points there. Okay, rolling the dice. Ooh, it's the exact thing you don't want to roll ever. It's the dreaded one, so he's done. Because, yeah, he gets zero, and I automatically get a bajillion. So it's one-to-one -one with the highest is a defender retreat with a capital D, so he dies. He bites it. Okay, so this attack we have... Actually, two to one attack. That's awesome. All right. In the open, it's a two to one attack. Let's roll the dice again. Nice. Getting some good rolls here. Six and a four. I would like that maybe to be a little less for them, but hey, that's really good. Um, obviously, because we have, what, four units attacking. So it's 24. No, wait. Yeah, 24. Um, and their values. Six, so they get uh, 28. He gets six, so it's a plus 22 on a two to one. That's a DR result, so he definitely takes a loss. And we'll retreat back up to Zaritsyn, like 
like so. And I could advance after combat. I don't really see why. Um, yeah, that poor Cossack unit may bite it next turn if we don't get initiative, but we have to do those kind of things just so we can start pushing them back a little and making them hurt. Okay, that works. That was a good... Um, I feel like that was a pretty good AFS turn. Polish again are going to do nothing. They're happy uh, in their happy Polish land because war is still not declared and they're still pretty chill. So, way to go, Poles, in your super happy times. Um, AIF, likewise, will do very little. There is just nothing for them to do. Um, they're happy where they are. Northwest. So our friends in the northwest up here, I think what we're just going to do with them is just get them in position so that they can maybe go attack there um, relatively soon. So we're going to go one, two, three. And maybe next turn they'll be ready to go. And we'll bring the, the Vonder Golds just in case we get that one, two, three. Just in case we get that uh, event for him to get released as well. Okay, so we got the Northwest. We got the East. Okay, one of our main fronts. So the real question, of course, is that we saw that pesky partisan down there and I should be sending armies after it. Um, I think I'll just send one army after it because I need to send the other one up here just to assure the Siberian destruction as quick as possible so I can start taking uh, other targets as the red player. So we'll send the guy from the Siberian go one, two, oh yeah he really kind of wants to get on the Volga doesn't he but he really can't. All right see the Volga is Movement cost. Unit must stop unless it began its move on the Volga and it's moving along it. Or okay, so it has to stop. So we move one, two, three. So we'll go ahead and go there. <coughs> this guy will just come up and help us with the fight. He'll go one, two, three. Um, and I think we're just going to go try to surround and, and take out these guys as best we can. So that's going to be. He just moved. And mountains cost two to move into. So we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. So we're going to go one, two, actually, one. I wish I could overstack, but I can't. Two, because he can't quite go there. So they may get away without being attacked this turn. I don't know. And then I will send this guy to go one, two, three. He's going to come up there. Um, was that nine? That's just nine points. And there's six there. I think we're going to have to wait. I'd rather just wait. Although he will probably try to attack me. Um, that's just what maybe the price we got to pay. To eventually drive them out. Pick it up, bug. So yeah, they're pretty good. He's secure. And the partisans over here are gonna continue their maddening quest to go one, two, three. And getting closer to drawing away that Siberian unit. It's probably gonna go take him on. Um, we'll see if they win or not. I don't know. It's never a foregone conclusion, but it's not so great with their stats, obviously, either. So, yeah. <sighs> Siberians are probably going to strike out at that somewhere, I bet. But I'm in the mountains, so that gives me a nice ship, so maybe they won't do that, actually. That's kind of why I'm in the mountains. Oh, yeah, that's why. That's why. Oh, that's not so good for them. Okay. So, yeah, so we're going to do this one battle down here. 
And the other thing I should note is that this guy, as you can see, has crossed uh, boundaries. Now, normally it's when you mark him with a done marker because you want to make sure you don't double move him, but I've already moved the south, so we don't have to really worry about that at all. Okay, so he's going to attack. Oh, he's on a roof. He's in the town. I forgot about that. So it's four to one, but it comes three to one because he's attacking. Nope, not so great. Two to one, so it's two plus three is five. He gets one. So it's minus two, so I get a plus seven actually on a three to one attack. And then his defender retreats, so he, yeah, he dies. So very partisan dies. And I will. You know what? I will, I will elect to join this effort down here. So we'll bring that on the army. He'll hang out in Saratov so that he can join the southern uh, forces next turn in their efforts to crush the AFSR. Okay. So that was the east. Oh, yeah, I guess the west did get managed. All right, we got southwest. There is nothing in the southwest that I want to move. In fact, I have nothing in the southwest, as you can see. It's pretty, um, there's no real red presence at all there. Okay. We have next logistics. All right. So everybody is in supply. Nobody is out of supply. Nope, so let's go ahead and do some rolls here. We've got the Cossacks and those guys. I think they're the only injured people they are. So we're going to roll two dice for them. Where are those dice? Oh. All right, so we're going to roll two dice for them. I'm going to name uh, the red guy for the Caucasus. Yeah, he Caucasus rallies. Way to go. Big time. That's huge. All right, so let's do some of the red guys here. Obviously, this guy automatically rallies because the red train is still in Zardizan. Uh Let's see if that 16th army here rallies. It does not. We'll do the 8th and the 11th. We'll make the 11th the red die. And the 11th rallies. All right, and that's everybody there. Everybody there is good. I believe there's one Polish. Yeah, it's just one Polish guy. He does not rally. Uh, all the red guys here are rallied. Let's see if this guy rallies in Tashkent. He does. Look at that. So he's ready. He's ready and waiting for those Bolsheviks to come down there and take what he's hard fought earned, hard earned with his. God, that made no sense. Did he's ready to, to you know give them a bloody nose? Anyway, me speak good English. Uh, let's see. Let's do the twelfth army there. And no, and then we will do the second Siberian and the West. We'll make the second Siberian the red die. No, but the West rallies. That's really, really big. All right, I think that's all the rally rolls. Oh, the AIF. No, he rallied, so he's good. Um, that's it. Okay, that's it. Logistics. I'm not going to pick up any um, any garrisons. Oh, I should have put one in Simbirsk, but I didn't, and I meant to do that, and I'm not going to do that now in case the partisans event comes back up, because uh, that may happen. All right, so that's logistics. Field staff chit, which we actually will not use. There's really nothing to activate or move. We'll use just two fronts left. The North and Islamic, of course, will do nothing. They are very happy with their gains, and uh, they're going to sit pretty there and just wait it out for the rest of the war, I guess, unless some sort of partisans show up, uh, which I doubt will ever happen. And that leaves just the last front, which, of course, is the Siberian front. So they go last. Last but certainly not least, and that, that logistical rally may have helped them there. Uh, because I think they are going to make... Um, well, maybe not, though. I don't know, maybe not. Although this, this Siberian unit will look at that partisan. 
Yeah, because he only has six, so it would be one to one. It would be a one to two, and they just don't have. He's kind of. I guess he does have a plus what six modifier. And yeah, but that guy's already got a two, so that's a plus four at best, and that means he would take a loss, and that guy would take a loss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That might not be a very smart attack. <laughs> I could bring the people's unit down, and that would give us a two to one attack. Uh, if we did that, that would be pretty interesting. A two to one. I'm gonna let my dogs out because they're annoying. All right, sorry, I had to let my dogs out, and they. Love to come in when I'm talking a lot on the games and they don't understand what I'm doing. Oh, here they come right back in. Okay, so that's interesting, but then I could just get swarmed and I really can't lose that guy because uh, I really need to hold out here. Although that is a very interesting idea to do a two to one that becomes a one to one attack and I would have a plus seven on it, which would be a plus five. That's an ADR. It's almost worth it. It's like almost worth it, but it's just not quite worth it. Uh, but I don't want them to have a lot of advantages here when they attack me, which they will have soon. Really good differentials. Oh man. That's pretty risky. No, I can't do that. We've been, we need to make them earn it. Um. It's going to be hard enough. There's going to be six things. I may get an armored train next turn. That's sort of a waste to throw that guy there. Uh, that's that, that may be getting... I may, I may have blown all my chances to get really aggressive, but that's the way it goes. All right, so we're going to do a one, two, three attack there. Uh, it's a two to one combat. Where are my dice? We're going to do it. Here they are. All right, two to one. Get a four and a two result, so he gets uh, one. I get two of four, so I get a, a pop differential plus three on a two to one, which is ADR. <laughs> of course, I suffer a loss. All right. So that's the end of that. We have all of our chits done. So let's take a look at the total map. And we can see here that we're still facing an onslaught of red troops here in the south. Not much to report over here in Poland. Getting geared up maybe to assault Petrograd there. Uh, over here, we're sort of going to just hold out and see if we can maybe get lucky on some bad rolls for them. And holding out in the north. So yeah, let's get a little big view. I think we can do that again. And heading into turn nine. July 1919.